Hey, I wanted to show you guys some stuff that I was working on last week. Uh, I wanted to integrate some Mist and ServiceNow and then have some reporting happening on uh, Teams and Slack's channels just in, just for something cool to do. Uh, I'm going to try to edit this video a little bit differently than I did last time. I'm going to see if I can overlay a recording of uh, my phone on top of this rather than just recording it from here. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my phone, Hey Siri. Uh, open a ServiceNow ticket. Sure. What seems to be the problem? Wireless sucks. Okay. Please hold on while I check it out. I found more details regarding your device. I'll also add those to the new incident. Okay. I created the incident for you. Someone will take a look and be with you as soon as they can. So as you can see, uh, Siri went out to ServiceNow, asked for a new ticket, and uh, ServiceNow created the ticket and then populated that information in my Slack and Teams channel. Uh, as you can see in the uh, web UI, I can drive out to Incidents, and we will be able to see my Wireless Sucks ticket. So when I open this thing, uh, the end user only really gave us a very short, non-descriptive uh, information on what's going on. Uh, so I decided to take that information and then uh, put it in uh, in ServiceNow to go reach out to Mist and grab some more information for us. Uh, I'm probably going to blur out some of these uh, some of this field here because I have way too much information in here. Uh, but this could very easily be uh, just about anything that you can see in Mist, right? So I was thinking about making this uh, the SLEs for this client, and I still can do that. I just kind of wanted to show that this is the information that I could grab automatically uh, from from these systems talking to each other. So now, uh, you know, if I was a, if I was going to grab this ticket as a as a support engineer. I would see this short description isn't really that helpful, but then also I have a lot more information that, that's being presented to me as an engineer. So the way that I worded this was uh, in in work notes, this is something that the uh, the people on the back end can see, like uh, someone that, that had this ticket assigned to them can see this, but the customer cannot. If they wanted the customer to see some, some notes or whatever, uh, they would populate this field right here and hit post. Um, I can also programmatically change the urgency, the state. Uh, we can assign it to a group of users, a single user, however we want to do that. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Another thing that I did was I created some custom dashboards for integration with Mist. So if I type in dashboards here and I click on dashboards, I want to, I'll just click on one wireless inventory. So this is going out asking Mist for the wireless inventory and coming back and populating essentially this, uh, this table here. And I just put some pretty graphs up, up against it. Um, so this is uh, wireless devices online versus offline. Here's all the different types of, of uh, access points or hardware that's that's in the wireless section. Cool thing about this is uh, native to ServiceNow, I can click on the, any part of this and now it filters by connected faults. So these are all of the devices that are in uh, the Mist live demo uh, organization that are offline. Uh, so that's, that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, I also made one for the wired let me dig into that real quick uh where did it here it is so did the same thing here uh these are all uh switches these are all juniper switches that have been onboarded and you can see just the same same idea i just wanted it to kind of look the same i don't have a whole whole ton in here uh yet because i just haven't haven't had the time to kind of make something interesting in here so another interesting thing that I did was I, I created some client monitoring. This is a little bit too much information. You might not need all this information, but uh, uh, I wanted to show how easy it is to grab it and, and present it in different ways. So here's connected clients. Again, I can click on that and you can see all the details for each client that's connected in this table. Um, I have clients by ClearPass role. This is empty right now because I don't have my, uh, my phone connected to my dot one X inside my lab. But a cool thing is that uh, Mist grabs the uh, AAA attribute from uh, a NAC, like ClearPass, or in my case it's ClearPass, it could be ICE, it could be whatever, uh, and then you can get that information from Mist. So I'm not actually in interacting with the NAC at all at this point, I'm still getting information from Mist and then just delivering it to ServiceNow. So uh, when I get on uh, my dot one x on my phone, uh, this would show up as an employee role because I set that role in ClearPass, so you know my phone equals uh, 
uh, employee, but it could be whatever it is. And it's all live too. So if I did that, um, I, I could probably do that right now, but I got a whole bunch of stuff I want to show you. Uh, here's clients by manufacturer. I thought that could be interesting, you know, uh, see what, how many Apple devices versus, you know, Android or Raspberry Pis or whatever it is. Clients by 2.4 or 5 gig. That that could be interesting to a wireless engineer. Uh, protocols. You know, who's using AC versus AX or N or whatever it is. You know, if we've got some IoT devices that are out there, I mean, we're not sure what they're, you know, what capabilities are connecting with. This could be an easy way to to show that. Uh, and again, I can click on any part of this. And so these are all the clients that are on N. And then, you know, clicking on on AC again, it would, it would populate that. Um, I did clients by SSID, so you can see what clients are on which SSIDs. Maybe you want to know which SSIDs are popular or whatever. Um, channels. I did this triangle thing because it looked cool. I don't think this is very useful, but uh, um, you can see what clients are on which channels. And you know, if this is something that you wanted to show, uh, you know, make available to a help desk engineer, this might be more useful to them than going in and seeing the actual uh, numbers because that could be like overwhelming or whatever. So then. What else did I make? I also did organization monitoring. I thought it would be interesting to have, um, so here's an example of the SLEs. So these are the SLEs uh, pulled from yeah, the organizational level. So this is at the organizational level what, uh, you know, what the SLEs are. Um, here are the audit logs for everything that's happened in, um, in MIST. So again, if I go into live demo and I drive back out to audit logs and I have mine set for seven days, so uh, you'll see that uh, this guy here uh, updated a webhook SS12. Go in here, you can see the same thing, uh, SS12. So it's, it's live. Uh, this information is pulled every time this, uh, these dashboards get refreshed. Another interesting thing that I did was I created a catalog event. So this is Mist Wireless Catalog. And then I just decided to do provision a new site. So when you click on this, you'll see that as a user, you'll be given this information. So this could be you are a uh, network engineer and you want um, a paper trail of what you're doing when you're doing it. Uh, it could be something like change man management windows that, that have to be aligned with uh, anything, anything to do with any of that monitoring managing stuff. Uh, but what I did was I, I said, okay, I want to make a new site, but I want to, I want service now to do it. Um, so if you look at AndyNet, uh, again, I'll probably blur some of the stuff out cause this is actually my, um, you know, my personal, uh, <laughs> missed environment, but you'll see here that, uh, that I've got two sites, uh, and I want to make a new one, but I want service now to do it. So as a user, you'll see. Uh, this new site name. So I want to create a new site named, uh, I don't know, actually know, service now site one. Uh, so I hit the order now button. And what will happen is this will go out to, you can see here, this will go out to an approver. So uh, there has to be someone. So this, this user uh, requested it and the system administrator uh, actually is the person that has to say um, they have to, they have to hit, you know, approve or deny. And you'll see on my phone, I've pulled up the uh, the ServiceNow application uh, of, of things going on. And you'll see that there is a push notification that says uh, an approval requested for provision of a new wireless site. If I hit refresh on this, you'll see um, the approve uh, provision new wireless site just now came in. I click on that and you'll see that the uh, ServiceNow site one was the variable. So if I was a manager, I could go through the information here and know whether it's good, bad, and different. I can approve and make a comment. I can reject, make comments. We're just going to hit approve. Actually, let me open my, uh, my channels here so you can see what's happening. I hit approve. And you'll see before the application even can tell me that it's done, uh, my, uh, my channels say that the service one or service now site one has been created. Uh, I can go into my notifications and say that uh, the approval was requested. It'll take it a minute for this app to actually catch up, which I think is cool that I'm doing it faster than the app can tell me I'm doing it. I can go into my site, hit refresh, and you'll see it's in here now. So that's how easy it can be. And uh, you'll see uh, it's giving me a whole bunch of notifications saying that the site was created, everything went well. Uh, and so that is one of the things that we can do. I can make this do pretty much anything we want, right? Like if we wanted to do, 
uh, change notes on a site or we wanted to create uh, SSIDs, um, you know, whatever workflow that we wanted to do that needed some, somebody else's approval, uh, we can do that. Uh, the same thing, if this is something that was really easy, like if we're managing uh, multi pre-shared keys for each user, that user could go into a self-service portal uh, in, in ServiceNow and change their password without anybody having to approve it. We'll just, you know, it'll just go through and run the, run the script, change the password and give the person the new password if they, you know, if they want it. And then uh, as an administrator of this, we don't have to do anything. So now these people can, can manage their own things. Um, these workflows can happen on their own and we can know about it by, um, you know, by the, the service logs or a ticket that can automatically be opened and closed. And then we can run a report on the tickets, however we want to uh, function that. Another thing that I thought would be fun was uh, adding webhooks. So uh, I wanted uh, ServiceNow to be aware of anything that's happening in Mist, and so I set uh, device event webhooks on my uh, network or my uh, my instance. So if I go into access points and I click on lab, I am going to actually record this on my phone and hopefully overlay it so that you can see what's physically happening and then what's logically happening at the same time. I just hit record on my phone. Let's see if I can go into utilities and say I want to reboot this access point. So that's happening. Close some of this stuff out. You'll see here in a minute. Uh, my access point is rebooting. You see the ServiceNow uh, has alerted the, uh, the Slack channel and the Teams channel that something happened. And if you look at it, you can see that, see that the uh, AP is being restarted by the user. And we're just waiting for the AP to restart here. All right, now it's uh, it's just updated again that the uh, AP has come back online and it's ready to go. Um, so this information can also, I have fed all of this stuff into ServiceNow in the service logs or the system, system logs, all. And so this is a, uh, I've created this, it's basically just what's happening, right? This the uh, MIST sends the webhook out to ServiceNow, ServiceNow uh, catches it, uh, sends that information to my Slack and Teams channels, and then it doesn't do anything with it. But what I can do with this is this is all the information that's come in through that, that, uh, that webhook. I can actually grab this and make it into a ticket. So I can make that, uh, I can make it automatically generate a ticket, assign it to a group or users or, or whoever, and then I can make it uh, automatically write it, sign itself off once the AP comes back up if I wanted to. So this could this could create a, a uh, traceable log in, in ServiceNow, a tool that you're already used to using, and then you won't actually even really need to get into uh, the miss site if you didn't want to. Uh, so these are just kind of some of the things I've been working on. I thought they were kind of cool. Um, I probably will create something of a workflow for uh, onboarding a switch, a miss switch, and then applying a template to it that has .1x configured on it, and, uh, and then show you how you could, from ServiceNow, onboard a switch, get .1x configuration up and running, and see a user connect without you really having to do hardly anything. But uh, anyway, stay tuned. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions. Uh, I think I'll try to make some tutorials too on how I'm doing this because it's really not that difficult. The hardest part is ServiceNow, honestly, because they're using JavaScript, and then you know I'm using JSON, and and you know I'm not even really using Python, so I'm just basically using uh, JSON. Uh, but that translation can get kind of weird because I'm not really comfortable with uh, JavaScript. And honestly, I've only been working with ServiceNow for a couple of months now. Um, I've always known what it is, but I've never really gotten into it to see how it functions. Uh, it's really cool, really powerful, but it also can get kind of confusing. So uh, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you on the next one.